This is the Samsung S8 with the Rhino Shield crash card. So, let's check it out. The Rhino Shield crash card bumper is just this. A single piece of custom polymer that's meant to require less material to absorb more impact. For like when you want to do this. It's delicious. Installation is super simple, always go in bottom side first, then snap the top in place. Removal is worth mentioning too, always squeeze the top off first, making sure you work out those finger muscles, as this will prevent your clumsy ass from stretching or tearing the ports on the bottom. The buttons are covered with raised cutouts with a tactile response and they're quite easy to feel out. Oh yeah. Not like that you dirty minded. They've also just recently updated the case based on complaints of the buttons being impossible to push. So they included cutouts within the buttons that actually make it clickable now without popping a blood vessel. Cutouts are at the bottom, although quite deep like Adele, they're wide enough to accommodate most cables. Yes, that means yours too. The real advantage of bumper cases though is a large ass cutout around back, with this thick ass lip along the top and bottom to keep your camera scratch free on tabletops. This time around for the S8, they've given the crash guard bumper a strict diet and slimmed it down quite a bit along the sides, but most importantly is low enough to still allow for side swiping, although it's still slightly concerning when this happens. And although I found the iPhone 7 Plus model to be quite wide in the hand, a trade-off I was okay with for the additional cushioning, but they've cut down on the added girth here as well, meaning it is easier to grasp in one hand, almost like there's not even a case on. Unfortunately, the sides of the bumper aren't as clingy as your girlfriend anymore. Not a deal breaker though, as the top and bottom edges hold on for dear life when you can't seem to be able to yourself. You can feel it wiggle around a bit when squeezed in the hand, but the matte finish combined with the slim design makes one-handed usage much more comfortable over the glossy and greasy naked S8. Whether you like looking at the front or back, the bumper shows it all off. It's like putting a bikini on a beautiful model or a pair of loose sweatpants on a handsome man. It's the next best thing to being naked. The phone, I mean, you dirty little. But that also means it's still just as prone to your greasy ass fingers. Thankfully, they've also released a back protector, albeit not as great as the one they had for the iPhone 7, basically because the curved edges make it difficult for anything to stick on and work properly, but it does more than enough for scratches and general wear and tear. Don't mind my poor installation job here, if you take your time, you'll get it aligned perfectly. And what's a slim case if it doesn't slide in and out of your pockets like one? Oh, mother for the 1% of you that actually care, this only weighs about 11 grams. That's like 3 Canadian quarters, but worth a thousand times more. Now, you may be sitting there flabbergasted at how such a simple piece of rubber can do all this. It's thanks to the honeycomb cereal they added on the inside of the case, except they call it the shock spread technology. Meant to disperse impact throughout the bumper and away from your phone upon dropping, and combined with the lip along the top and bottom that's thicker than your own, you've got a bumper that can handle this. If you're wondering, they've just released a crash card for the new Samsung Note 8, which I'll also link in the description below.
After reviewing the phone in this scene, I made a final drop afterwards, which led to finally cracking the back after all that. And it was thanks to a single pebble that hit the phone before the case got to cover it, which is something to consider when buying a bumper case. Your back and fronts are still vulnerable, especially on uneven terrain. But given how much this piece of rubber went through to finally get here, you'll never go through that much abuse yourself unless you're into that sort of thing. So I'd say you probably have nothing to worry about. This time around though, they didn't release the amazing flexible screen protector we tested on the iPhone 7. Instead, to accommodate the curved screen, they've opted for a glass option which unfortunately isn't super impact resistant. When installing, keep in mind the adhesive is only along the curved edges, so line that baby up and bam. But if this isn't hammer resistant like the iPhone 7 model was, what is it good for? Glass is much more scratch resistant than flexible protectors and this is no exception with a hardness rating of 9H. But what does that mean? Well, let's find out. Not a single scratch. I'm fairly impressed. My concern, since the screen wasn't adhered to the glass, would there be an air gap when interacting with the screen? And in my test, there weren't any responsiveness issues and edge sliding worked just fine. If you want to pick one up yourself, don't forget to use the code ACCESSORIZEB and save 15% off your order. What are you waiting for? Links are in the description down below. If you're looking for the least amount of case with the most amount of protection, look no further than the Rhino Shield Crash Guard. A huge shout out to Evolutive Labs for sponsoring the cases and review. I personally use their products, but their support means I can keep the lights on for this channel. I also have complete freedom in all my drop tests, and all opinions are from my own brain. That's it. If you love what you see and want to support me in creating more reviews, check out my new store linked below for accessorize me merchandise like my hat and shirt, along with old accessories I don't use anymore so you can pick up at a bargain price. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more, and leave a comment below letting me know what case you want me to review next. I rest my case.